to the word of God a born again child of God is the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus now we said righteousness is a gift of God according to Romans chapter 5 verse 17 and the reason and the purpose for which we've been made righteous according to that scripture is so that we can rule and reign in this life with Jesus Christ. Can I hear an amen? amen. I, am, I hope you all understand what I'm trying to share and you are with me on the same page. Now we also covered the aspect that righteousness and holiness are not the same. Holiness has to do with conduct whereas righteousness has to do with status. We said nobody can become righteous through holiness you become righteous by receiving a gift but then we also made the statement that to maintain your righteous status you have to live in holiness amen so you cannot attain righteousness through holiness but you can maintain your righteousness through holiness and it is very important that you do so because every time or any time sin comes in you are dislocated and displaced from the position and status of righteousness we began to define righteousness and I want to pick up one particular aspect and go from there we said righteousness is the ability to stand before God even as Adam stood before the Lord before he fell without the sense of inferiority or guilt that's one aspect of righteousness then we looked at the other aspect of righteousness which is to say it is to have the right standing with God having no sense of inferiority to sickness to disease to poverty to death or to the devil so I want you to get this why are we dealing with this subject we're dealing with it for because many people do not know what they have been entrusted with and what has been given to them as a gift by God and many who claim to be Christian and born again are still living in the fear of the devil they still fear death and they still make such statements as I don't know when I might die nobody can tell when you can die but that's not what my Bible teaches my Bible says that the keys of death and hell are with my Lord Jesus Christ it's not the devil that has the keys to death and the second thing that the Bible teaches is that the power of life and death is in the tongue so nowhere in the Bible does it teach that the devil has the right or the power over death to inflict death or sickness upon a child of God can I hear an amen, amen. now you see if you don't understand righteousness and your status of righteous stand with God then you will always live in the fear and with the feeling that you're inferior to these things what you know you've got to settle this in your heart and in your mind when you are righteous you have been given a status amen you did not earn it it's a gift that God gave you and this status places you in a position of superiority not inferiority but superiority over death sickness disease poverty and the devil Ephesians chapter 2 look at verse uh, 6 
and hath raised us up together. What has he done? He has raised us up together. Now wait. If you want to know what that is, read verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us, or made us alive, is another word, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. Amen? And then he goes on to say, hath raised us up. Now wait, look up please. He's saying, when we were dead in our sins and trespasses, we were made alive in Christ, and we've been raised with Christ, and have been made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ. Say amen. Now, the Bible says that's where a child of God is seated, along with Christ in heavenly places. Question, where is Christ seated? Because if you want to know where you are, you got to le learn to locate where Christ is because you are seated with Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, if you understand this and believe it, amen, you can hear it but not believe it. This morning, I'm encouraging every one of you to believe it simply because the Word says, not because what you feel. Hallelujah. Okay. So he says this. Where is Christ? Chapter 1, verse 21 of the book of Ephesians. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Hallelujah. So can you see this? There is nothing about Christ. Be it a power, be it dominion, be it a name. Not only in this world, but also in the world that is to come. Read the verse prior to that, verse 20. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Where is Christ seated? Inside of God in heavenly places. Now, I told you last time, I said when we read the phrase right hand side, it could be on the right side of God, but it's not necessarily talking about right or left. It's talking about a position of authority. There is nothing greater than the position of authority on the right hand side of God, okay, wherever it is. And Christ is seated in the highest office. Amen. And we, according to the book of Ephesians, are seated with him. Now what I want you to see is this. So, if every name and power and dominion is under Christ, hallelujah. So when I come to Christ, when you're born again, you receive the gift of righteousness to rule and to reign. Now wait. If you are inferior to somebody, can you rule over them? If you're inferior to the devil, can you command the devil? No. But the Bible says, you shall cast devils out in my name. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I want you to see the superior position, the status that God is giving to every born again child as a gift. Come on now. I understand something. You did not earn it. But that is the position every child of God is supposed to enjoy. Now, sickness, death, poverty, and the devil do not lord over you anymore. They're under you and I by virtue of being seated with Christ. Now, what does that tell me? That no matter what is attacking you, you're above that. Whatever sickness you've been diagnosed with, whatever be the report of the doctor, 
whatever be the challenge and the storm you're facing, I want you to know this morning that you're above that. So it doesn't mean you won't have these attacks. It doesn't mean the devil won't try to stir up a challenge and come against you. You see, Jesus said to the disciples, let's go to the other side. And he didn't say, well, I hope we will get there. He knew the will of God. Can I hear an amen? amen. So as they set sail, and Jesus was lying in the boat and fast asleep, a storm was stirred up by the devil. Amen. Now, when the storm was stirred up, the disciples thought that they were going to die because they thought that the storm was greater than them. But when Jesus woke up, he knew who, who he was. Come on now. He knew who he was. See, when you understand your position and status in God, no matter what the onslaught of the enemy is against you, it could shatter your emotions. You could seem to break down in your soul, but deep within your spirit, you will have the knowing, I'm going to overcome this. I'm going through this, and along with the psalmist, you will say, even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I know that God is with me. Hallelujah. And I'm coming out victorious. You see, I'm not trying to give you some head knowledge this morning. I'm trying to instill a truth in your spirit that will liberate you and help you to walk in victory no matter what the outside circumstances are and what the challenges are that you're facing. Say amen. Sister Lakshmi has been suffering with severe back pain for the last 20 days and in the recent it so happened that she also developed severe headache because of which she was having blackouts. Last Friday she was here in the service and pastor had specifically released a word regarding her condition. She stepped into the frame and received that word. Instantly nothing happened but she did not lose hope knowing that when a word is released it is bound to manifest in her life. She went back home and she went to bed rejoicing and giving thanks that the Lord had already touched her and healed her. The next morning she woke up and to her surprise there was no trace of back pain in her and neither the, did the headache again attack her she stands here to testify that it's been one week that pain has completely left her all glory to Jesus so you see you're not inferior to anything in this world hallelujah your superiority is not based on the degrees you have after your name your superiority is not based on how the world looks at you. They said of Jesus, he is of the devil. They said of Jesus, he is not a man of God. They decried him. They blasphemed him. They, they denounced him. They said he was a man not of God. It, and this was being preached from behind the pulpits in all the synagogues in the land of Israel. It did not make a difference. Because he knew who he was. The world doesn't know who you are. You don't know you, who you are, but God knows who you are. And if you want to have victory in your life, you better know and understand and believe and agree with what God says about you. The day came when the children of Israel were crying out to God for their deliverance because the Midianites were impoverishing them. The Midianites were stealing everything that they were manufacturing and producing. All the agro produce was being stolen. And they were living in the hideouts. And then the angel of the Lord comes to Gideon. And God said, Thou mighty man of valor. When that, Gideon. He looked over his shoulder to see who he was talking to because he could not believe that he was the mighty man of valor my friend today you may not think or you may not be able to believe what God is saying he's saying you are righteous that means it's not a nice phrase 
It means you are powerful. You're loaded with divine ability and divine power to put the devil where he belongs that is under your feet. Hallelujah. And no matter what is coming against you, you're above that. Is it lack? Is it an incurable disease? Is it a situation in your business that's beyond your control? What is it that is bothering you? God said you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. My friend, you have not earned it. Jesus earned it for you. And he's giving it to you as a gift. The question is, would you receive it? You see, your mind will say, how can that be? I mean, and it will make you think about you. We'll talk about that a little later. But I want you to see that righteousness places you in a position. And it's a status from where you rule and reign everything in life. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. You, this is a position of ruling and reigning. This is a status from where you are superior to all the forces of darkness. All the forces of darkness have to come under you. They have to obey you. Hallelujah. So you don't have to fear when they talk about devils. When they talk about a house being haunted by ghosts. Come on, talk to me somebody. You don't have to fear when somebody says there is a curse on that. You can reverse the curse. That's the ability that God has placed within you. You can break the curse. You can reverse the curse. You can bring down the presence of God that will destroy every work of the devil. Hallelujah. You don't have to live in any kind of fear of the enemy. I don't care what the name of the devil is. He is defeated. He is under the feet of Jesus. Therefore, he is under your feet. Hallelujah. This is not attained through your work. It's a position you receive from God by faith. Hallelujah. We talked about one more thing. We said, how do you receive righteousness? We said, it's received by faith. Go to, very quickly, go to Romans chapter 3, please. And verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified. Everybody say justified. You know what the word justified means? Justified means declared righteous. That means declared to have right standing with God. All right, let's read it now. Therefore, by the word, deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be declared righteous or ha to have right standing in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now... The righteousness of God without the law is manifested. Glory. There is a righteousness without the law. And this is being witnessed and manifested and witnessed by the law and the prophets. What kind of righteousness is this? Verse 22. Even the righteousness of God. Somebody say righteousness of God. Even the righteousness of God, which is how? By faith. Somebody say by faith. By faith. This righteousness of God is by faith faith not by the deeds of the law okay by faith of jesus christ unto all and upon all them that believe for there is no difference for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god now watch this what is he saying this righteousness which is by faith is unto all and upon all them that believe which means righteousness is unto all, has been provided unto everybody. God so loved the what? So righteousness has been given unto who? The world. But is everybody righteous? No. Because it says it's unto all, but it's only upon them that believe. Amen? So it will not manifest upon somebody until that somebody receives it by faith in Jesus Christ. 
Because, she says, there is no difference. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means everybody on the planet needs this grace. No matter what your background, whether you're a Jew or a Roman or a Greek, it doesn't matter. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And nobody can be judged to have a right standing with God because they do the deeds of the law. But they are judged righteous or given the status of right standing with God because of their faith in Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. So how do you become righteous? By faith in Jesus Christ. Now, look at verse 26. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that it might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. 28. Therefore we conclude, okay, therefore we conclude that a man is justified. Again, the word justified, declared righteous. How? By faith without the deeds of the law. Glory be to God. How do you become righteous? By faith in what Jesus Christ has done for you and I. Verse 30. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Whether you're circumcised or uncircumcised, it doesn't make a difference. Everybody is made righteous in one way. That is by faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible also talks about how the Jews did not submit to the righteousness of God and therefore have not obtained the righteousness of God in chapter 10 verses 1 through 4, okay? But we're not looking at that. But I just wanted to reestablish that fact this morning. It is by faith. We said it's more like somebody being born in a family. You know, every one of us has been born in a family. And every one of you has a family name or a surname or a last name. Is that right? Yeah. Now, you, I told you that you did not have to do anything to attain the last name. All you had to do was be born in that family. Correct? You didn't have to do anything. You didn't have to go and purchase it. You didn't have to do nothing but be born in the family. And I also said you hardly had anything to do with where you were going to be born. Amen? You did not have a role to play in that. But when you were born, your parents gave you that last name. By virtue of being born in the family, you were given that last name. The same dynamic is at work when you're born again. What happens is, when you're born again, God does not give you instructions on how to become righteous. It's a gift given by God so every born again person in the eyes of God has been given the gift of righteousness now there may be many in the church today that are born again but if you're not aware of this truth the prophet says my people are destroyed for what that's right if it's not God's fault it's my ignorance that is keeping me bound and making me feel that I'm inferior to the devil and I just have to put up with a few ears over here, sit in a corner and wait for the return of the Lord. Not understanding that a mandate has been given to us by God to take over this earth and to achieve that, He has given us a status and He backs us with His very throne. Hallelujah. You're not called to give up and wait in a corner for the return of the Lord. You are supposed to put up your employee building. Amen. I want to change that in your life. With the knowledge from the Word of God, you got to learn to live in authority. Because the Bible says Jesus is the last Adam, and He came and lived the life to show us this is how man is supposed to live. Not under the pressures and not under the circumstances, but 
over the circumstances, ruling and reigning in your situations, in your circumstances, and in your world. Say amen. Get out of that image of defeat. Get out of the image of lack. Get out of the image where the devil is really harassing me. If the devil is troubling you, is harassing you, it's time for you to take your stand and say, come on devil, get back up now. All these years and all these days, I was blind. I did not who, know who I was, but now I know. You do not have any authority over my life. I command you to take your dirty hands off me, of my money, of my life, of my children, of my family, of my marriage. You cannot touch it because I have authority over all these in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen? Now, so when a person is born again, the Bible declares us to be righteous. How did this happen? Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. For he hath made him to be sin for us. He hath made who? God made Christ to be what? Come on. He made him what? Louder. Now, do you see? Do you, I want you to get this. Jesus is the sinless, spotless, blemishless Lamb of God. But on that day, He became sin. He not only carried our sins, but He became sin. When God looked upon Jesus, Jesus was sin. That's why Jesus cried from the cross, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because God cannot fellowship with sin. Now that's a reality that you have to understand. That God made him to be sin for us. Why did Jesus become sin? For you and I. What was the purpose? Who knew no sin, that we might be made what? Come on, shout louder, please. That we might be made what? Righteousness. Say it again. Milo, I need to come and see my boy. Tera last naaro my phone calls kore chesi. Jab tune vishe mein nere mere to aashiru chupar thunar ni. Idu ma ke to santosha nikali gis tune ma ke to prosaan nikali gis tune dekha hai chesi alagi mere rastu thele par rastu nandi. Mar me ki the aashiru ad karenge unde. Mar meeru maato part baag swamlay. Inka ane ek mande ki ki vaakyam prakriti chana ke sahay par mani me mande prosaan gis tune mula. Idu ka the vaakyam lo kachchi tanga ke aashiru ad unko nichu rai bande. Ipure the maro devo ne. आशीर्वदाक्य आशीर्वदी 